I remember going to school and one of my high school teachers said something that really stuck to me. They said, you might hate school now, but one time in your life, you're going to look back on your high school days and you're really going to miss them. And I remember thinking, Bro, what are you talking about? Now, I remember thinking, no, there's no way that's true. And I was right. I've been out of high school for a minute, and I I don't miss a single day. And I don't think I'll miss a single day in the next 30 years. I feel like if you're in your 50s or 40s, and you're looking back to your high school days, you, you should have enjoyed your 20s more, bro. I think maybe she was looking at it from a teacher's lens where she's just, you know, teaching high school students all the time. So she's like, man, I wish I was back in high school again. Okay, okay, I won't lie. I do miss some aspects of high school, but then you got to remember everything else. And I'm going to be going over everything that kind of sucked in school starting with group projects everybody hates these i don't know why they still do them the excuse that they have for these group projects don't even make sense oh we want you guys to work in groups so you guys know how to work in groups when you get into the workforce okay firstly when i'm in the workforce i'm working with people that already have experience and are motivated by money to do the job also we most likely have similar interests and similar mindsets if we're working at the same job in high school, this is a bit different. In high school, your group will consist of Tom, the Asian kid that's super smart but only knows how to use his smartness on League of Legends. Ashley, the super basic white girl whose only contribution is that she's gonna make the group project look nice with her with her colorful pens or whatever. And then there's me, the all-arounder that can take up any aspect of the project as long as he's pushed, and these guys don't have the capability of pushing me. And lastly, we have this guy whose name I don't remember because he was in juvie for the past two years. Teachers have got to be some of the most hypocritical people on the planet. It seems like they expect complete perfection from their students, but then the moment they make a mistake, they throw out a handful of excuses and, oh, I'm only human, I have a hundred other students, and blah blah blah. No. You're a grown-ass adult, own up to your mistakes. I'm talking about when teachers are running late. Have you ever noticed that when you run late, there's no excuse? No exception, just go to the office and get your tardy pass. When teachers run late, oh, I'm a teacher, I'm a grown-up, you guys can wait five minutes, blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, what? Oh, I got caught in traffic, you know, grown-up problems you guys don't have to worry about. Okay, you should have left your house 30 minutes early. Teachers be getting on students' cases over late and missing assignments, but then take an entire semester to grade papers. And then their excuse is always, I have hundreds of students and I have to grade all their assignments. First of all, bro, you assigned the work. Why don't you assign a workload that you can handle? Secondly, I have homework in six other classes as well. So, you know, I have to get done with all that homework too. And thirdly, you already know the answers. Have you ever had that one teacher that acts proud when they finally grade your papers? Like, oh yeah, guys, I pulled an all-nighter and just did all... I graded all of your work. Motherfucker, now you know how we feel every single day. Can we talk about how lazy school administration is when it comes to investigating fights and who was defending who? Like, you really out here getting in trouble for defending yourself in a fight. This is how school administration expects you to handle some guy throwing punches at you. I remember when I was in school, even if you didn't swing back, if you just got, like, involved in a fight, you're getting suspended. So, like, you could get jumped by, like, three people and still get suspended. Could you imagine that? Imagine getting jumped and getting in trouble for getting jumped. That's like some Joker backstory shit, bro. That would turn me into a villain. I think their excuse for this is that they didn't know who started what and they don't trust any of the witnesses. And I mean, unless there was like a teacher witness and like a camera or something, I, they're, they're not gonna, they're just gonna suspend you both. Bro, you know you're cooked when you walk into the first day of math class and you see that fresh off the boat Asian or Indian math teacher. Now, I'm not gonna judge their capabilities of knowledge on the subject. I know they're very knowledgeable on the subject. However, my problem is that the subject is already a very difficult subject to learn, but now I have to learn it through the thickest accent known to man. This actually happened to me. I had this Asian math teacher back in like, uh, what was it, like junior year or something, and bro, trying to learn algebra too, sleep deprived in the back of the class, with the teacher that has a thick accent, she was a good teacher, don't get me wrong, but man, that accent was just, it was too hard to get through. I ended up passing though. Man, I had so much beef with school administration. Like this one time the assistant principal saw me on freshman orientation, say Kobe, and shoot my milk carton into the trash can. 
and unfortunately I bricked it and Kobe came down and smacked the shit out of me. Actually, just kidding. This was so long ago that Kobe wasn't even dead, so he just pulled up normally. And I went to go pick up this milk carton off the ground, and the assistant principal was acting like I was going to pick it up just because she was watching. She was like, yeah, yeah, you better go pick that up. And it's like, dude, come on, bro. We had a strict ID policy at my school where you had to always wear your ID. And, you know, we had a lot of problems in the hallways in the school. We had a lot of thugs, you know, fighting and clogging up the hallways. They wouldn't go to class until after the bell rang. They didn't understand the concept that you had to actually be in class by the time the bell rang. So, uh, it caused a lot of problems in the hallway. However, the principal saw me without my ID and thought that this took over top priority of everything else in the school and decided to chase after me. Like literally I had a run from the principal and I was on some Assassin's Creed shit. So I, I dipped, I turned the corner and then I quickly went into a random classroom after I dipped and turned the corner. I was able to get so much distance on her because she was some fat Karen. Like she had the fucking the Karen haircut and everything. The same principal, the first year she was supervising our school had a prep assembly where she hyped up how good our school was. Little did she know, we were notoriously known for being the worst behaved school in the city. She would go on to transfer to another school two years later. I don't know if you guys experienced this, but I'm going to spit it out there to see if this is relatable. But elementary school, right? In elementary school, especially fifth grade, you were always taught, oh, things like this won't slide in middle school. Like you had all your stuff underneath your desk or like that desk like storage area. So, oh, well, in middle school, you're gonna have to use lockers. So you guys need to be prepared for that. And then you go to middle school and your middle school is like, oh, well, locker management's a skill you need to learn so you're prepared for high school. And then you go to high school and they don't even use lockers in high school. They had lockers, you just didn't use them. Like you would just bring your backpack and stuff to class. Like I didn't even know where my locker was all four years of high school. Another example of this would be notes. So uh, elementary school, you would get notes that the teacher would already have pre-made and they would hand them to you. In middle school, you would have a paper that's already organized to help you take your notes. In high school, you're expected to just take your notes on your own, right? In fact, I remember a lot of high school teachers being dicks about taking notes, where they would go through the PowerPoints real fast, and when you would complain, they'd be like, oh, well, in college, they're not gonna stop for you. Now, in college, maybe this is a unique experience to me, but in college, not only do they stop for you and let you take your notes, but they will go back to certain slides to let you finish your notes, and if not, they will tell you that the PowerPoint will be uploaded and that you basically will have your notes done for you. So we're back to elementary school level note taking. College itself had its own flaws and its own set of things that made it terrible, but I think that's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. But these are some unique experiences I've gone through and also some relatable experiences I've gone through in school. Just to remind myself that no, I do not miss school and no, those were not some of the best days of my life. It's my mom.